Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I am Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church, and it's good to be with you today. This is our 810th day together in the Word of God. So we're back in the book of Job and Job 19, one of the most beautiful sections in the whole book of Job, as we see clearly Job's Old Testament Christian faith, right? He's faith in Christ, and yet hundreds, maybe thousands of years before Jesus was born. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us life in your Son, Jesus Christ. He is our only Redeemer and the only sure hope for your people in all ages. We pray that you would write Job 19 on our hearts, that you would be glorified in our lives as we meditate on your word together today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Job chapter 19. Job answered and said, How long will you torment me and break me in pieces with words? These ten times you have cast reproach upon me. Are you not ashamed to wrong me? And even if it be true that I have erred, my error remains with myself if indeed you magnify yourselves against me and make my disgrace an argument against me, know then that God has put me in the wrong and closed his net around me. Behold, I cry out, violence, but I am not answered. I call for help, but there is no justice. He has walled up my way so that I cannot pass, and he has set darkness upon my paths. He has stripped from me my glory and taken the crown from my head. He breaks me down on every side, and I am gone, and my hope he has put up like a tree. He has kindled his wrath against me and counts me as his adver adversary. His troops come on together. They have cast up their siege ramp against me and encamp around my tent. He has put my brothers far from me, and those who knew me are wholly estranged from me. My relatives have failed me. My close friends have forgotten me. The guests in my house and my maidservants count me as a stranger. I have become a foreigner in their eyes. I call to my servant, but he gives no answer. I must plead with him with my mouth for mercy. My breath is strange to my wife, and I am a stench to the children of my own mother. Even young children despise me. When I rise, they talk against me. All my intimate friends abhor me, and those whom I love have turned against me. My bones stick to my skin and to my flesh, and I have escaped by the skin of my teeth. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, O you, my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me? Why are you not satisfied? With my flesh. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. If you say, how will we pursue him, how we will pursue him, and the root of the matter is found in him, be afraid of the sword, for wrath brings the punishment of the sword, that you may know there is a judgment. That's Job 19. Job's desperation, Job's deep agony here is so thick. It's just, it's hard not to have your heart break for this man as he pleads for mercy and as he's looking for help. He thinks that God has just cast him off and wronged him, right? Um, this is 
Job says, you guys are just tormenting me and breaking me in pieces with my words because here I am completely undone, completely torn apart. I know it's God because God's sovereign over everything. And this was natural disaster. And this is people coming in. And this is something that just doesn't, you know, he's not assigning it to random chance. He's not even really assigning it to Satan, although Satan is the one directly causing these things. But God is the one who is sovereign over all. And he just, he says, God's done this to me. And he's put me in the wrong. He's, he's, closed, he's closed his net about me. So even though Job would affirm that God is just and God is holy, he also affirms that his suffering is, is not because of his sin, but God has done it to him for no reason that he can see. And again, if we didn't have the first couple chapters of Job to give us that peek behind the curtain to see what's happening in the throne room of God when Satan comes and that conversation happens, we might think, oh, come on, Job. Everybody's sinful. Everybody deserves wrath from the hand of God. And that is true. Theologically, it is true. Everyone sins and falls short of the glory of God. Everyone deserves the wrath and curse of God because of our sin. But Job is a believer and Job is an upright man and he's blameless in that he is trusting in the Lord and he has this faith that really does guide his life. He's pleasing to God. We know he's pleasing to God because God himself has expressed how pleasing he is to him. And so he's just continuing to kick against this, this wrath that he has being counted as God's adversary, which God, of course, is hasn't counted him as his adversary. Job is presuming there a bit. God doesn't, God doesn't hate Job. God is not against Job, but he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand. And he's in this very, very pathetic place. And he's his pleading, verse 21, I don't understand how his friends could continue speaking against him after what he says here in 1921, but they do, right? He says, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, O oh, you, my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. It's a, hmm. And then we get this picture. Right as he's at the bottom of despair, right as he's come to the end of himself, right as he has nothing else to say, he says something very surprising. Seemingly out of nowhere, and yet... It is a sign, I believe, of true Holy Spirit worked faith within his heart. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. God wants, Job wants this recorded as a witness. This particular thing that he's about to say, he wants it recorded as a witness for generations to come. And of course, here we are at least 3,000 years later, probably closer to 4,000 years later, on the other side of the world, speaking a completely different and unknown language, and we have this. And this is all over the world. In the best-selling book and most published book of all time, the most widely distributed and most accessible book of all time, here are Job's words. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has thus been destroyed, yet in my flesh, I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. This word redeemer is the same Hebrew word that is often translated as kinsman redeemer like the book of Ruth. Job knows that he has someone who can identify with him, who can be a kinsman to him, who can, who can closely relate to his suffering and be a redeemer, be one who will vindicate him, who will ransom him, redeem him. And that at the last, at the end of all time, at the end of this world, he will stand upon the earth. And he knows that he's dying. He, he believes this disease he has where he's scraping the sores with the pottery, his skin is being destroyed. He believes 
when he dies, still in his flesh, in my flesh, he says, not in the spirit or in the spirit realm or up in heaven, on the earth, in my flesh, I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself and my eyes behold and not another. This is belief in the resurrection of the body at the end of the world with the kinsman redeemer standing upon the earth. This is faith in Christ. Of course, he doesn't know the name Jesus or exactly what Jesus will do to bring this about, but he's believing in Jesus, in the Redeemer, who will stand at last upon the earth. And he's believing in the resurrection of the body, the hope of the resurrection that has been the true faith of all of God's people from the very beginning. Job is one of the oldest, earliest believers in all of Scripture. And he has this faith in the resurrection. And he has this faith in the kinsman redeemer. The book of Hebrews tells us, this is the sermon I'm going to be preaching this Sunday from Hebrews 2, that Jesus became fully like his brothers so that he could redeem us from the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and set us free from that tyranny of the fear of death that's held us in slavery all life long. And so Job has this faith in this one who would come and identify with him as his kinsman and yet conquer death as his redeemer. And that is ultimately where Job finds redemption. He's confronted by God at the end. He's humbled. He repents of presuming upon the knowledge of God. But ultimately his redemption will come when our redemption comes at the end of all time, when his body is raised and our bodies are raised, and we are united with Christ, the kinsman redeemer, in the new heavens and the new earth forever. That's our hope. No matter what we go through in life, fair, unfair, um, it's all beyond our control, whether we understand it or don't understand it, whether we can see the cause of it or we can't. No matter what we go through, our hope is Job's hope, that my redeemer lives. We know his name, Jesus. We know that he lives as the resurrected Christ who sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. We know that he is coming to judge the quick and the dead at the end of all time because he's promised to do so. He's our Redeemer. And in our own flesh, resurrected from the dead, made alive gloriously, eternally, we will see God. Isn't that great? That's the hope that we should be living for. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Thank you for this sure and unshakable hope. Job had it. We have it even more clearly displayed in Jesus Christ. We thank you for him. We praise you. Help us to live by that hope and not by what our eyes see and experience in this world, but to live for the unseen, eternal, true reality of our kinsman redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me for Job 19. Tomorrow we're going to move on to Job 20. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Mm -hmm.